one last tab to look at is slicing. So we'll leave these two as they are. Um, and let's do a new simpler looking at the slicing feature, which is great. So we've got this um, loop here, which is just some beats. Okay, so this is just something else I've just grabbed off a record. You can get, you know, drum drum beats from wherever you want, and sounds from wherever you wherever you can find them. And I'm gonna drop this in here and go straight to slicing mode. <coughs> Let's expand this out so we can see it a bit better. There we go. So each of these are transient markers and they can be deleted by double clicking and you can create new ones um, by double clicking as well. Usually Ableton does a pretty decent job on detecting where it should put transients. I'm going to go in and adjust the sensitivity because I don't want a slice for every single hit. I just want them for the main ones. So you'll notice that the ones in between now are grayed out and each of these slices is put onto a MIDI note. So when I play a MIDI controller, okay, so each of these is non-destructively mapped now to a MIDI note, and I could try and Okay, um, one, one other thing to check out here is just this mono versus poly. This is also important if you convert this into a drum rack, which I'll show you in a minute. But at the moment, um, mono means that only one slice can play at a time. So if you, if you hit another slice before one's finished, it will, um, the, the preceding one will take over. So I'll try to, so this has got a symbol at the end here that you can see in here, over here. And there's this one straight after. So if I play them in quick succession, notice how you don't hear the um, symbol. If I play poly, it means I can play um, more voices. So it's set to six, I can have up to 32. I'll leave it on six, because I only want to play two notes. And you'll hear this note finish while this note's playing. So. Okay, so um, pay attention to your playback mode, and I'll explain what these do in a second when you convert that to a drum rack. Um, warping's the same as before, and fade out is uh, is an option as well. So let's just play this one again. Notice how it's fading out over that symbol with the fade out off really abrupt okay so I might leave fade out sort of at about one second okay so um, we could go ahead and record a new drum pattern here and I might just show you quickly how this would look in uh, the piano roll settings. Let's turn preview on. Okay, so this is what I'm doing just with my MIDI controller. And potentially you could go in and draw something in here. So I'm just going to look for just a little hi-hat sort of thing. Just to quickly show you that you could you can draw in a new um, a new beat. Oops. Uh, just want to duplicate that. So 
I'm going to just quickly go through and change a few velocities here. So holding command. Okay, and I'm hearing these little sort of rolls going on, so I'm going to just create one there. drum pattern going on there we'll play this um, this thing in it's gonna slow the tempo down a little bit on that so we've got a bit of something going on So there's a bit of an idea of what you can do. I mean, this is just a rough um, muck around with this, but um, there's some kind of plenty of creative possibilities that you can explore using these three modes. So we've looked at classic um, over here, which um, allowed us to have uh, sustain by using loop and a full amplitude envelope. We looked at one shot where we're just triggering it with a fade out and we used warp on this to um, make sure it played back at the same speed um, even at different pitches and then we also looked at slicing which allowed us to play different parts of the sample um, by using different MIDI notes and we sort of programmed something in there or recorded these in and let's just look very quickly <coughs> at an option so this is what I want to show you slice to drum rack and I'll hit this button it'll turn it into a drum rack and then in the next video I'll we'll look at um, building drum racks so click that what that's done 
has turned this into a drum rack with all of the different slices on their own um, simpler instruments. So for each slice, you've got a, a different instrument that can have different settings. So this can have a filter like that, and this one doesn't have to. Um, it's also available in the mixer, uh, and there's plenty of other things to look at in there. So I'll leave it there, and I know I haven't explained it, and we'll get into this in a following video. All right, thanks.